Yes, my name is Patrick McKenna, and I've been with the Fumble Exchange since the beginning uh, of Fumble Exchange, being conceived by George Boyle. So I'm, I'm proud to be a participant because I think it's, it's a great organization and there's a lot of uh, dynamic people that work there and it, it keeps me stimulated. Of course, Steve Jobs has to come into design and innovation somewhere, but um, I just got my hands on a new iPhone 5. Yay! But uh, <laughs> the reason why uh, I've, I've, I've brought this up here is because, you know, it's actually not that different than the previous. Um, but I want to use it as a, a point to say that, you know, this phone sits aside my keys and my wallet in my pocket. It's important to me insofar as it forms a, a function, and that is it, 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 it allows me to uh, keep my life simple. That's, that's the way I see it, you know. And so I'm not about to accumulate a lot of things. I do like pairing things back, keeping it simple. And uh, this relates directly to the line of work that I'm in, in as far as I uh, have a company, Wabi Sabi. I design uh, fitted furniture, and it includes uh, the kind of things that people want to put a little bit of value in, you know, or important. Uh, these are vehicles, they're not just objects, they're vehicles for people to enjoy their lives. So this, this is my website, if you get a chance you can take a, take a look at it separately. Um, let me talk a little bit uh, about who I am uh, because I think it's important to uh, what I do for a living. I uh, was uh, brought up in Chicago, 18 years in America, and uh, I, say, I always say Chicago, but in actual fact, uh, I'm from the suburbs of Chicago. You know, it's kind of neither here nor there, and it was an ever-expanding suburbs. Uh, but when I was young, I had the opportunity to kind of look towards the, the country and kind of see the, the vast cornfields, and uh, that very much influenced uh, one side of me, which is this kind of, you know, um, uh, hardworking, uh, you know, earnest, you know, that, that can work both ways, but, uh, uh, you know, hardworking, uh, industrious. Um, so I learned those values growing up outside of Chicago. But I was always looking towards Chicago. Um, you know, in other words, I had my eyes sell, set elsewhere. And I got uh, to experience uh, architecture and uh, through Frank Lloyd Wright, uh, a lot of buildings, um, and Mies van der Rohe has a lot of buildings in Chicago. And that... Were, were, those were some early influences. Another important aspect of who I am is that from a very young age, um, my, my parents divorced, and you're like, geez, where is he going with this? But <laughs> <laughs> I don't wear that as, you know, um, it's, it's not something that has hindered me, but it, in actual fact, uh, again, it's a, it's a tool because uh, from a very young age, it has allowed me to um, look outward and um, to be what I would call a cultural outsider. And I was a cultural outsider in America, in my own, in, in my own uh, home. So um, from a very young age, I became uh, pretty close friends with a, a Japanese guy, and I got introduced to his family. And, uh, you know, I, I was exposed to another culture. And that was important, that was integral for where I then went, you know, which was later on to New York, Seattle, um, and on to Japan for two years. So Japan, um, I studied Japanese in college. I have an arts degree. You know, I'm, I'm not um, necessarily brought up through the ranks as a, a joiner. Um, but I have the values that along the way, because I've been a cultural outsider, I'm constantly kind of seeking. And I've seen things that interest me and I follow them, you know, and so I've, I've, um, I've, I've dabbled in joinery, I've dabbled in design, I've dabbled in, um, in lots of things, you know, and, you know, getting uh, an education was an important part of that. So, uh, moving on to Japan, um, I saw, um, I was 19 years old, and I had my first experience in actually, you know, being immersed in another culture, living there for a year, um, I was exposed to wabi-sabi, so um, let me tell you a little bit about wabi-sabi. Wabi-sabi, in short, is something that is uh, kind of rustic simplicity. 
it is pairing something back to its, uh, its essentials, but it's, in this case, like materials that are worn well over time. It's somehow humbling uh, or, you know, a sign of humility, I should say. Uh, and yet, um, it's a cultural aesthetic, but it's a reaction to, um, at the time, uh, the Shogun warriors were kind of uh, on the wane, and there was a rising merchant class, and they were traveling between Tokyo and Kyoto, the, the former um, uh, capital of Japan. And these uh, merchants were patrons to these tea houses, and uh, you had um, the merchants giving lots of money, and eventually these tea houses becoming gilded. And, and so wabi-sabi was a reaction to this, and it was, it, it was kind of, it came out of something more religious with, or philosophy with Buddhism, and uh, pairing something back, again, getting back to roots, you know, getting back to the basics. Um, so um, I just wanted to read um, a little bit of this poem here called Cutting Up an Ox, because this gets to the essence of it. And this is what my friends listen to when I, when I tell them at late nights uh, having, having drinks, you know. So Cutting Up an Ox, Prince Wen Hui's cook was cutting up an ox. Out went a hand, down went a shoulder. He planted a foot, he pressed with a knee. The ox fell apart with a whisper. The bright cleaver murmured like a gentle wind, rhythm, timing, like a sacred dance. Good work, the prince exclaimed. Your method is flawless. Method, said the cook, laying aside his cleaver. What I follow is Tao, beyond all methods. When I first began to cut up oxen, I would see before me the whole ox, all in one mass. After three years, I no longer saw this mass. I saw distinctions. But now I see nothing. With my eye, my whole being apprehends. My senses are idle. The spirit is free to work without plan, follows its own instinct, guided by natural line. My secret op by the secret opening, the hidden space, my cleaver finds its own way. I cut through no joint, I chop no bone. A good cook needs a new chopper once a year, he cuts. A poor cook needs a new one every month, he hacks. I have used the same cleaver 19 years. It has cut up a thousand oxen, its edge is, is as keenly as keen as if newly sharpened. Uh, I mean, it goes on a little bit, uh, but <laughs> you know, the, the last line here is, that is it, my cook has shown me how I ought to live my life. So you know, it's, it's not just about cutting an ox, uh, it's uh, about um, feeling something. It's an intuitive sense. I think we, we come from the West, we think logically, you know, the, the Greeks who gave us uh, amazing philosophy, uh, it was more uh, kind of logical, and this is uh, an intuitive sense. So this is an example of uh, wabi-sabi in, in the form of pottery, um, and in the form of uh, more, more pottery, <laughs> um, and in uh, my own kitchen table, a nice, you know, nice joint there, <laughs> and dovetail joint. Um, but, you know, it's rustic, and I think Irish people understand what is, uh, you know, it's kind of calling you home. It's simple, uh, and, uh, but it's simple in that it's, it's about the people that sit around the table, not the table itself. So uh, in, this is much to what George was saying, that we need to um, not accumulate, and uh, we need to keep an open, open mind. So each project that I address, I keep an open mind. I take a remit. I discuss, you know, the client is a very integral part of the design process. Um, uh, then we have a Dieter Rams, um, you know, in um, Japanese they say wabi-sabi, together these two concepts mean tranquility, simplic simplicity, balance, but also liveliness. Uh, this is his point of reference. And so this is, these are a few examples of my work. Um, and I'm just kind of flipping through them. There's paneling, joinery. Uh, you know, th this is my own house here. The, that, you know, the, again, the idea is that we do have things. We have objects. We have stuff that we want to um, have in our lives. But uh, everything, uh, you know, my essence is about trying to simplify. I mean, people see their homes as sanctuaries. 
They want to come home and um, kind of put the world behind them. And so some of the more successful design things have been the most simple things, like uh, at an entrance hall, um, you have a place to put your bags, put your stuff. I mean, this is the practical side of it. And uh, so I bring a very practical side to design, um, which is derived from a bit of philosophy. And um, now I want to talk a little bit about a project where I collaborated with uh, an architect, uh, Jim Lawler of Melted Snow. And Jim's with us here today. Um, so um, the, the projects in town, uh, the client, uh, had um, an increasingly, you know, or the, it was having another baby, <laughs> and uh, uh, he and his wife were having another baby. So the the house, uh, which is a secondary house, uh, was um, kind of, you know, to the max in in terms of the, the the stuff that they had, and they still wanted to use it. It's a it's kind of a, a cool hip place, but um, the important thing here is that we took the client's remit. Uh, you know, Jim uh, was the one who came up with this idea of a spine wall. Uh, what's important is Jim and I worked very uh, collaboratively together on this project because there's, there's overlap uh, in, um, in what we were, um, uh, what our, our functions are because we were both designing. But I, I'm designing something that's a little more specific with the furniture, but Jim has the larger architect's role um, but there's a, I just wanted to say that there's a blurring of the lines uh, between the disciplines, uh, but in that there's a shared ownership. And, it, you know, and I do believe that you get better results with that. And like I said, it's an iterative process. You get uh, information coming from the client, coming from the architect that feeds in, uh, information feeding in uh, from bottom up, where uh, the innovation is with regard to the joinery. Um, so, we, this, this is kind of the, the next image is just, again, our planting the furniture into, um, and the spine wall is uh, serving uh, a function of, this is a main kind of busy street side. So we have a retreat side, the courtyard side. This is in Georgia Street Arcade. And we have an active side with the kitchen and uh, the dining room. And uh, hidden doors that go into bathroom, hidden doors go into bedroom, and, uh, and then an opening to, um, so onto kind of the, the real images. Um, there's the spine wall. So some of the innovation comes from, um, if you see how the, the blue uh, is, it kind of disappears into the, the timber. I mean, it's joinery detailing. It's stuff I won't bore you too much with, but um, it's what I bring to the table and what architects and uh, my clients appreciate. So just a few more images there you can kind of see the, um, you know, the value of the storage that a now family of four living in uh, a bed one bedroom. You know, it's a temporary accommodation that they can use and it got a nice feature in uh, the Irish Times. Um, okay, but then my last point is really about what I call the, the, the payoff. Uh, this is a letter from a, a client who, uh, this job was completed about a year ago and um, to me, receiving a letter a year after the project without a, a check attached to it, you know, that's usually you get the thank you letter, but it's, you know, here's the final payment, thank you. Uh, it's more of a, here's your final payment. Um, but this, uh, you know, she, she, she kind of made, made me uh, inspired <laughs> to keep doing this because, you know, the, what's challenging are each project has different set of parameters, uh, different team. You know, it's kind of like uh, movies. You know, when they make movies, oh, the director was great, you know. And no, the acting was brilliant, you know. So that's important to find that team. So, uh, and then my last thing is just to say, yeah, I mean, I, do, I don't have a huge amount of time to luxuriate in design. So I'm, I'm playing a role, and uh, my role is to be a materials expert and to be a joinery expert you know, and innovate in that. And then uh, the last thing is coffee versus philosophy. Uh, I'd rather be motivated by philosophy, uh, you know, every day, get up, and this is what keeps me, uh, you know, going, than coffee. Thank you.